Hello, welcome to our online service for the 6th of June, the first Sunday after Trinity. The eagle-eyed of you may be looking at the altar frontal and thinking that should be green, but this was recorded just before Trinity Sunday when it was white, so we don't have the magic of digital enhancement to make it green artificially. There we go. The Collect. O oh God, the strength of all those that put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn today is Amazing Grace. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Oh, precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come tis grace has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion me as long as life endures Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail And mortal life shall cease I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be Gospel readings from Mark chapter 3, beginning at verse 20. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. 
But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks. be to God. Did someone say, gentle Jesus, meek and mild? Well, what we see in this passage is the Jesus who, when he needed to be, could be uncompromising, confrontational, even fierce. Of course, in the Gospels, we find a Jesus who is kind, gentle and accepting in his dealings with the poor, the sick and the despised. But we also run into a Jesus who refuses to be defined or controlled, who won't be limited by the expectations of others. Nobody, not even his mother, gets to tell Jesus what he should be. The passage we've heard is topped and tailed by Jesus' resistance to his family's attempts to control him. Humanly, we hear the voice of a young man breaking free of the conventions of normal, settled, inoffensive family life. A voice which echoes through our own clashes with our children as they insist on defining themselves and push us away when we try to limit their freedom. And divinely, we are reminded that God doesn't take kindly to our efforts to pin him down and make him be the kind of God that suits us. It seems harsh when Jesus so bluntly dethrones his family. And it certainly isn't a model for how we should treat our families. But the point to be made matters more than placating his relatives or his community, or the professional religious people. By his words and actions, Jesus is forming a new kind of family that will reach across blood ties, social status, and race. He's inviting everyone to be his family. And here we are. And then there are the troubling words about the sin against the Holy Spirit, which can't be forgiven. Countless Christians have wrestled with these words, trying to work out the cash value of this sin. What does it look like? How will I know if I've done it? And many ruthless and unscrupulous pastors have belittled and manipulated their flock by enforcing their chosen understanding of the sin against the Holy Spirit. For me, while I don't want to defang Jesus' warning, It's not about something we might fall into without knowing it and thus be lost forever by an unhappy accident. It's more that any deep-rooted, unyielding resistance to God's goodness and love has ultimate consequences. If we will not let God love us, then we will not be loved. If we turn our back on forgiveness, then we'll be unforgiven. All the other stuff that we obsess about, the bits, sometimes big bits, of unkindness and greed and impurity that we know are wrong, all of that will be forgiven. But if we say no to God, even when the glory of his love and truth is right there in front of us, then that no, maybe, will stand. So, All are welcome, 
in God's house, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, and the distinctions we make between worthy and unworthy, family and not family, in our efforts to manipulate God's favour, melt away in the full warmth of the sun. But if we really don't want that warmth, if we prefer to be cold and dead, then perhaps that's how it will be. The gift is offered again and again and again. But we have to take it. Amen. In our prayers, when I say Lord of all life, our response is help us to choose life. Let us pray. Lord of all life, help us to choose life. Loving God, help us as family members of Christ's church to show your likeness by doing your will in loving service of our communities. May those who come to worship with us find your beauty and truth your welcome and warmth, so that little by little your kingdom of love may grow. Lord of all life, help us to choose life. Loving God, help us as members of the human race to work together to share resources, to accept those who are different from us, to listen to and learn from one another, and to seek peace and pursue it. Lord of all life, help us to choose life. Loving God, help us as good neighbours to support and care for all who are in need of healing, comfort and hope. And bless those whose primary calling is to work for the well-being of others. May we show by our lives that all are welcomed by you. Lord of all life, Help us to choose life. And so we join our prayers in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second hymn, which expresses eloquently the wish, the longing for our church, not just as a building, but as a body of people, to be welcoming, accepting, and loving towards all, is let us build a house where love can dwell. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us 
Let's build a house where prophets speak And words are strong and true Where all God's children dare to seek To dream God's reign anew Hear the cross shall stand as witness And a symbol of God's grace Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus All are welcome, all are welcome All are welcome in this place Let us build a house where love is found In water, wine and wheat A banquet hall on holy ground Where peace and justice meet Hear the love of God through Jesus Is revealed in time and space As we share in Christ the feast that frees us All are welcome, all are welcome All are welcome in this place Let us build a house where hands will reach Beyond the wood and stone To heal and strengthen, serve and teach And live the word they've known Hear the outcast and the stranger Bear the image of God's face let us bring an end to fear and danger All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place Let us build a house where all are named Their songs and visions heard and loved and treasured, taught and claimed As words within the world Built of tears and cries and laughter Prayers of faith and songs of grace Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter All are welcome, all are welcome all are welcome in this place. Amen to that. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and upon all those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Until we meet again in person or online, go well. God be with you. Goodbye.